All right, Dan, but, I, I, I did wanted to say, did want to say to you that we are, of course, are recording this. It's a, sure. uh, it's a uh, regular open meeting of the absolutely uh, of the board. At the moment, we have no other attendees but those of us that are here, which is usual for us. But I just want to make sure you're aware of it. But think of what all those people are missing, beginning. right, Barry? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Thank, thank you. In fact, when I logged on, it said you know we were being yeah. recorded. Yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but but I'm glad you're going about this the right way. So. Um, I know that the objective is that the Bullard House can be visited by the public and that it can become a, a, a place or a center to display and celebrate some local historical artifacts. Um, perhaps it could be used for some other programming, although we all know that it's a very small space. But I look at the fact that there's also a lawn next to it that's part of your downtown. So I see that potentially things could be happening outside. And in fact, you know, maybe the vision for, for Bullet House is that it does have some usable outside space that's also accessible, who knows. Um, but it, all, but it also has the town hall next door. Exactly. That is also a resource that's available yeah. to us for, for larger uh, yeah. presentations and exhibits. And. Um, and then I also remember from the planning work that we did a while ago, and I believe it, it's been executed, that part of the town hall project was to create a storage building that was going to be used for um, the safe climate controlled storage of artifacts and historical materials. And I'm assuming that that building is adequately and effectively being used. I don't know to what extent there's still things in Bullard House that really should be categorized and moved up there it's yes. uh it's not big enough <laughs> it's not big enough um, it's, we've we've moved into it it's full <laughs> and it's full and okay. that, that doesn't mean we don't keep stuffing more in i mean come on that's the yankee way to do it Barry. But <laughs> the, the reality of it all is that it's not big enough at the present time we have large objects and and some other materials over at a former fire station a, a, a short distance away. Uh, okay. And we're hopeful we're gonna have that as permanent additional storage space. Okay. That's not, at, at the present time, that's not a, close to as well controlled, but we can keep the paper and the textiles and so forth in the control building and, and okay. work on that um, basis. Question, when you say that the storage <laughs> building up at, at um, the old town hall isn't large enough, was it outfitted? with the proper kind of storage, shelving, bins? Is it, is it layered in such a way that you can be using it as effectively as possible and also being able to access things? I mean, it's one thing to stack objects 20 high, but if you can't get object number three out of the pile, it's not a very good no, system. No, 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 we've got it pretty efficiently set up. We've okay. got uh, uh, shelving and ranges of shelving and and so on, and we've put it together so that it, you can ex access things. That's excellent. Um, um, can uh, we, so can it, we... It, we, we, haven't, we haven't piled up so badly we can't move in it, and we don't want to do that. But yeah. uh, at the same time, we, uh, we have to keep working on how to efficiently store enough stuff to handle it. And we're also trying to clear the stuff out of the other house. So. Yeah, can we add on to that building to get more stuff? Uh, that's already entered my head as something that we really need to consider as an addition for that building. Because mm -hmm. it would seem, you know, it's a simple enough structure, if I remember. It looks like it's yeah. just a small little barn that, you know, a lean-to a lean or a little L off of it, you know, well, potentially. It's two, could... it's two stories, uh, or a story and a half, a little yeah. better than. And I think it would be quite easy, again, going uphill and back, <clears throat> to put an addition on from the second floor level. Um, we could put a, a, a significant addition on that way that okay. would help a lot. So I'm going to bring this back to Bullard, though, because it, it, and thanks for bringing me up to yeah. speed on the storage building. But I understand, it, and may, correct me if I'm wrong, that Bullard is still being used for the storage of some items that oh, yeah. perhaps need to get out of there. Yeah. Yes. Very and, oh. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to ask, Barry, would you call it more a just a gathering and a collecting of items than storage? Isn't it boxes mostly placed on the floor at Bullet House? 
Oh yeah, it's sta mostly yeah. stacked up stuff. So it's yeah. not like we have shelving and all of that. No, 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 we don't have that down there. Mm -hmm. And of course we've got furniture that we've collected to use in the bullet house too. Mm -hmm. Right. And we, we've, moved, we've moved some furniture up in the new building, but not too much of it. Okay, but presumably um, we have things that need to be moved out of there before we undertake any significant work. Oh, and, yeah. and it wouldn't make sense to try to work around those things. So is one of the action items I'm wondering to categorize what's in there, make a determination of whether it's, you know, for future use of Bullard, whether it gets added to archives of other historic materials, uh, whether there should be some sort of a disposition of some of the pieces and whether there's some that just need to be junked. Well, at some point we know we've got to cl clear, I mean, if we're gonna do a cup, so some of the major stuff that we've talked about, the bullet house, we're mm -hmm. gonna to have to clear it to, to do that. And that may mean some kind, it's probably gonna mean some kind of temporary storage for uh, mm -hmm. a lot of that furniture and stuff until it's ready to go back in there. Yeah. And but, I'm I mean, thinking... we understand that, that part of it we understand and, yeah. and we, we are chipping away at the, at, the, at the deal. At some point, we may be forced to just move it wholesale into another place and without processing more of it, but we're trying to process as we go yeah. um, in the meantime. Yeah, and I'm, just, and I'm asking from the perspective of, um, it doesn't seem perhaps that it's necessarily fair that a group of volunteers you know, at, at, for the Bullet House or on the Historical Commission that are responsible for this and is it at some point you hire somebody to take care of it may happen yeah yeah I, you know it's a it's a it's a fair amount of work so right, um, right. And, and sometimes that work can stand in the you know it, getting the energy and the manpower to do that work can sometimes stand in the way of of reaching the further goals and that's what i'm yeah. trying to establish of whether that's a step in the process that we need to be considering. And you, know, you all know better than I, um, but as I'm trying to help identify what is our plan yeah. and, and, and help you to articulate it, I think that that's potentially a piece that, that really needs to be thought through. Um, Any, so that, anytime, anytime that we are aware that we're ready to really move on any of the construction work, any of that yeah. stuff, we can make we can make the transition of getting the stuff out of there. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, even if we have to go hire a storage unit or something in order to do it. To go do it. Okay. Yeah. Now, well, that's a good Dan, attitude. I don't know if this is something you want me to bring up now or we want to bring up later, but it, it's going to cost money to hire someone to do that. Sure. And I, I'm, I'm confused quite a bit about how the grant fits into that. We're, we're squirreling away $100,000 for a match. So that means we don't have a lot of money mm -hmm. to spend. Um, we, we have two, $200,000 that we've gotten from um, CPA, mm -hmm. but um, we're saving 100,000 of that for um, the match. Um, and then, and saving, I forget how much, uh, you know, for, for the match, for the match. And then I don't forget how much of the rest of it is going to hire an architect because we can't go anywhere until we have an architect if we are going to apply for the grant. So mm -hmm. it, to me, it becomes this conundrum. And I don't know that this is when you want to talk about that, but I just wanted to bring that up because we were talking about hiring someone to help us with the collection. And sure. We may yeah, need all that money for something else, you know. Yeah, no, Janet, and I, and I appreciate <laughs> and, and highly respect the comment. I'm thinking about it from the perspective of the entire project. So okay. I'm not looking at the funding sources at right. the moment, but I'm thinking about if, if we were tomorrow to start typing up a, an application to ask for money from Mass Historic or anyone else, I want to know every little piece of what we would be asking for money for. And to me, mm -hmm. if cleaning out the building or dealing with storage or um, categorizing items that are going to be on display is part of our vision, I want to assign it to, to a, a task and a level of manpower or something that needs to be purchased or whatever so that we could track that cost. Now, whether we actually spend the money 
to do that, or we get some volunteer help, or regardless of what bucket we take it out of, to me, it's still part of the big picture. Um, mm -hmm. and, and if we go back to town meeting to ask for money or we go for a grant, I'd like it to be very well thought out so that no one can poke holes in how we conceptualized getting from where we're at today to achieving our vision for the Bullard House. That makes sense? Yes. yes. So, so, yeah, yeah. so and I, I, I think, I mean, this historical society has got, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 earmarked for the Bullard House now. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, I've always looked at that as either something that can be used for small pieces of it around the edges of the project or mm -hmm. something like this storage issue and moving and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, th those are, those are things that we could use that some of that money for. Sure. And uh, and th th there's some potential for some other funding from that direction mm -hmm. at some point too. So I I've I've not worried about this, but uh, on the other hand, yeah, it's got to be it's got to be in the mix as far as trying to estimate cost. I don't know what to say about it. Yeah, well, I Just think the, you know with, with any sort of a budget, Barry, you do the best you can, and you have some rationale for how you get to a number. And at yeah. the very end, you're going to build a contingency into it anyways, sure. right? And yeah. and anything that's left over. As far as I'm concerned, we go into operating budget or programming or you know, other things that could be part of the future. But so, so Janet, I want to make sure I adequately responded to your yeah. comment because I yeah. wasn't saying that we should just go go and spend some of our money right now to do something. I was saying we should identify what each of the steps are. And, Excellent. And, I do and understand that. And yeah. assign it a certain way. Um, my gut feeling, and I'm going to respond to this maybe a little ahead of when I was going to, because you mentioned architectural services. Um, I don't think you need a lot of architectural services. Um, it's a really small building. And I think maybe you need some design assistance mm -hmm. with being able to put together the drawings of how the space works in floor plan and what needs to change or be modified to make sure that it's accessible or you know whatever other uh, you know, criteria we, we identify and the same thing on the exterior and anything that we're going to replace, you know, identifying if it's not matching something that's adjacent to something else that we're clear about what that is. But I don't think it's a whole lot of architectural work. I do think that we need structural consulting. Um, I believe that um, as soon as we start opening up a house like this to the public, we've got to be able to very clearly identify that it's meeting whatever code is is relevant for the use of those spaces as well as making sure it's structurally sound you know when we when we take something apart or put put it back together especially if we're going to lift the house and put it onto its foundation um, i believe we need some consulting there and i also believe that we need civil engineering now we need somebody to survey the property understand exactly what the grades are understanding where utilities are and helping us work through some of the access because to me that's going hand in hand with if we do lift up the building and put it onto a new foundation you know exactly what height are we setting it at and what does it look like so um, those are you know two consultants that I think are going to be of vital importance and then uh, a little further down the line I would imagine that we would have somebody helping us with you know electrical systems and some mechanical, and I think these are gonna be so light engineering, but I think we wanna make sure to do it properly. Again, as soon as we're putting people into there, I think we should know how we're getting our fresh air and how we're climate controlled and what have you. I, I know nothing about whether there are any environmental, condition, any environmental conditions in Bullard House. I fully expect that there's lead paint but do we have asbestos or is there anything else that we should have surveyed to identify? Because um, it's an inexpensive thing to do. And I'll also just tell you that nowadays, as soon as we apply for a building permit for a renovation or a reconstruction of something existing, um, it's not uncommon that you will be asked for who is the licensed inspector who has, you know, surveyed for lead, asbestos, et cetera, for hazardous conditions, just because we don't want workers in that kind of an environment without an understanding of what 
remediation or mitigation there, there is. So I don't know whether there's been any environmental analysis or survey in that building, but as I said, it's really inexpensive. You know, it, when I say inexpensive, I, I think I just had a group, uh, we use FLI a lot out of Dedham, and I think they just came in and did a 14,000 square foot building for me in, in Arlington, commercial building, but I want to say their entire report was four thousand something dollars. Oh wow! Okay, so Bullard House is going to be—it's going to be a half-day site visit and a testing and a report. Yeah. So I would be adding that to the list um, just to make sure that you know we know where we stand. The um, so that was just my listing of you know where I think you're going to need some consultants because you mentioned architectural. I think that there are some other pieces that we need to to consider that all making sense so far yes all right so yeah, we, we we appropriated the money uh some of the money was for architectural services that we just did at this last meeting right and we included with it uh associated uh, uh engineering and design yeah. costs yeah so that's hopefully great. that'll be included we'll be able to use that money for those kinds of things sure sure so I'm going to leave now and go to a slightly different discussion, which is the vision for Bullard House. I, I'm assuming that what I described as you know, a, a essentially a living museum or a, you know, a community uh, place to gather and celebrate local history, look at artifacts, and you know, potentially have some programming that's what's in my head. I want to hear it from all of your perspectives. That's quite accurate um, uh, as it is. The preservation plan that we had drafted several years ago, uh, the latest edition was like 2016, mm -hmm. uh, goes room by room through the house. And among the things it does, it talks about what kinds of exhibits might be here or what kinds of programs okay. might be in this space. And uh, we can take that material and make it into a document that's separately that would perhaps make that, uh, make all of that without looking at how you're gonna patch the plaster or something. Okay. What, had there been Barry along with that in 2016? Was there some uh, type of a mission statement or a tightly crafted paragraph that really talked about what Bullard House is in the community? I don't think there is. No, I mean, we've, we've never made that. Because it, it, it seems to me that that would be a very um, strategic, um, uh, a strategic thing to have to be able to articulate what the, what its purpose is, what its history is in the community. You know, maybe a little bit about how this became a town-owned property and you know what it had been. Because that, to me, is the beginning of any sort of an ask. Right. It's, you know, why is it significant and what's our vision? And it should just keep on repeating. It should always be the same. It could certainly be um, morphed or refined a little bit as needed. And I think in some areas it can be open ended enough to leave it for flexibility and interpretation moving forward. But I, I think it's clear it, its purpose should be something that anyone involved in this, if asked about it, can rattle it right off because it's those two sentences that we all know. And, yep. and it, that sounds easier than it, than it is at times. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Was it Ralph Waldo Emerson who said, you know, I responded with a long letter because I didn't have the time to make a short one? Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> right. wonderful. Um, yes. <laughs> right, and, and I think it was Ralph Waldo. I, I could be wrong. Um, but I think spending some time, and you all can probably do that far better than I, but I'd be happy to give you any feedback on it. I think it's worth putting together. It shouldn't be, altogether shouldn't be more than a page, which talks about the significance of this building, how it came to be, and, and you know, what, it, what its ten, intended purpose is. Um, and I also would uh, uh, ask you to consider whether there's any sort of an underlying theme that, that ties it all together. And, and I'm gonna give you a for example. Um, I was asked recently to help 
um, a group in another small New England town take a significant building which had a place in history um, involving democracy. And the theme for what they'd like to do with this building, which is going to be very similar to what you're trying to do at Bullet House, the scale is not terribly dissimilar, it's a little bit larger, um, is uh, you know, they want it to be a center for celebration of democracy. So they will have programming events, gatherings, exhibits, et cetera, that speak to the importance of democracy and democratic process. And of course, their whole mission completely came alive after the attacks on our capital um, and very relevant, right? And I'm not suggesting that Bullard House needs to you know, copy that theme, but I think it's a unique, opportunity as soon as you take a building like this. I think, you know, Evie and crew did it across the street. You know, it was simply a place for community to gather and, and the vision was very clear, right? And I think you have the same opportunity at Bullard House. And I think, again, it can have the synergy with Old Town Hall, you know, et cetera. So I just ask you to think about that when putting together this statement. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that is, again, it's in, it's, sprinkled throughout the preservation yeah. plan but the fact that this house has had all kinds of different uses that relate to the town commercially yeah. uh, 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 the old inn the first store in the town was on the property uh, right. uh, a, a series of different things there was, the post office was there for a while right. the fire truck was in it for a while there was <laughs> there you go that, you see that, and that this that this story i mean it's like the whole history of the town. It kept right. piping, popping into the history of the town yeah. all the way through. And but therefore that's part of what we wanna do is to preserve some of the features and things that relate to the different times of the-, of the Exactly, and you see to me, to me that you're getting right at why this is an exciting piece to oh, put yeah. together and yeah. keeping it really tight. I could even picture at some point, you know, a Bullard House logo that has these little, you know, windows down below, almost like a, an old eight millimeter movie, but you know, with a picture of a fire truck, a little store, a little, mm -hmm. right? You can almost <laughs> picture that yeah. as soon as you're walking through it. It gets, gets you excited and jived up about it. Um, so so um, that's my spiel on vision for what it's been, what it, we want it to be. And then I look at the physical building. And aside from structural repairs, things that need to be improved, accessibility, those things that we need to work through, um, I need to understand whether there's a strong desire and vision to do a historic preservation of this building to a particular point in time that's appropriate for the building, or whether the effort wants to be more on stabilize it, fix it, repair it, make it useful. Because I think that each one has its own path. And I also think that how you get money will be different for both in some, some areas. And when I heard or read in Tim's report, doing framing downstairs and you know, trying to make some repairs, my head also went you know, to another place, which is a friend of mine who happens to have been the former owner of Shaker Workshops, who you probably know of that business. You know, he bought an old home in Groton where I used to live. And when he took a beam out of the basement because it was deteriorated, or he found the same species of wood and had it milled and notched the same way because he wanted to be able to walk through this building and have it be appropriate. Now, I recognize how much of the original material has come out of Bullard House, but I also recognize that it's a really pretty small, simple structure and that we could do some preservation work that is very appropriate for the building. Um, I, 
everything will be some sort of a compromise because this building had been added on to and there have been little changes, but we can still be consistent all the way through. And if something was from a different time frame or you know, look different, size differently, we can also celebrate that, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to have every window be exactly the same. We do, it, it, can, it can have some quirkiness to it, but do you understand the difference between the two different approaches? Yes, and, and again, the preservation plan reflects a little of that. We, pr prior to getting involved with Tim's uh, uh, evaluation, we, the, we'd essentially said that the fireplace wall in the middle of the house, that the front rooms upstairs and down would be more, more the preservation approach. Mm -hmm. And from there back, the, the lean-to and especially the second lean-to would be practical usefulness mm -hmm. because those areas, again, had been so much uh, changed over time. Mm -hmm. And that, that trying to put them back to an 18th century time or an early 19th century time didn't make a lot of sense. And secondly, even in the front part of the house, one of those rooms was done over. Correct with long windows in the Greek Revival period and a Greek Revival door, outside door. And while it wasn't extensively changed inside that way, they did take out the fireplace, you know, what would have been the big fireplace chimney of, of, in, in, in the original building and, uh, and, you know, went to stove chimneys and so forth from the 1830s. Yeah. And yeah. therefore we'd like that area to reflect some of that 1830s flavor. Um, and uh, 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 at the same time that, you know, some other things we wanna, you know, try to play more with the earlier time and particularly yeah. the upstairs ballroom, uh, while we haven't gone to the route of trying to restore its full size, we would uh, be able to use the substantially existing room uh, and decorate it and handled in a way that would emphasize its original uh, mm -hmm. uh, original use and stuff. So, so Barry, uh, as, as you're talking, if it's okay, do I have permission to share? Sure. I believe I do. Sure. Right? Yes. Oh, right. I, I think, would look, yep. There okay, you go. I, it, it looks like it's working and ignore if you're seeing all sorts of other stuff on my computer. Um, are you all seeing yeah. Board House yeah. right now? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'd like to document what you're talking about, Barry, right on into this diagram if you'll Fine. all allow me to do so. So mm -hmm. what I heard, and this is gonna be in no order, but this area in the back, I consider to be the lean-to, right? And uh, what, you, what you were saying is that that area really could be rather utilitarian. Yes. Yeah, I think we have said that, haven't we guys? Oh yeah. What's that? It's functional. Sorry. It's a functional. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and then in the gallery and entrance room to some extent are the same. Um because while they're part of the what we what looks like an original link, I mean the right hand end of the house, which is the original piece of the house, was a one room mm -hmm. deep building which was extended with a lean to the museum entrance room. So you're and saying this is, this is the original? No, come back I'm to sorry. just the east front room. Just the front half of that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's the original house and quite possibly it was two stories. At one time I thought it was one, but at this point I think we are gonna say it was probably two because it looks like the uh, posts are all one piece so mm -hmm. so this is the original stair no nope. mm -hmm. there was perhaps no original stair mm -hmm. there was a front door where that stairway now is originally which uh the remains of that door frame are in place and um in 1830 the 1830s and and i might add the area behind that stairway was where the big uh, cooking chimney and so forth were. Okay. In other words, M meaning somewhere here. No, that really almost in the, the whole corner. space behind it. Almost the whole space before. 
even bigger space, huge space. Yeah. And there was at one time more house out to the right, though it wasn't integral in terms of size and height and structure. It was, mm -hmm. looks like it was lower. This foundation walls that extend out there in the front part. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it really was a, exactly what it was and when is another question. Right. Another question. Uh, but that's long gone. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been there in, in way, way yeah. over 150 years, probably. And then they extended the, where the museum entrance room, they extended that as a, as a lean-to. And almost at the same time, and maybe indeed exactly at the same time, built the left-hand side of the house where the West Pilar and the gallery are. And that was originally built as lean-to. This was. Yeah. So the left hand side was originally link was built originally lean to. And the front entry was built as part of that. Barry, when they yep. extended, he's got the arrow going off to the side. Um, yep. yeah, that one. Is that where they extended it to a lean to, or is it in, in the back there where the museum entrance room is? No, the foundation is close to the front end of the building. It's, the my, extended personal foundation. it's yeah. my personal opinion. And again, there are, there's a, um, there are mortises in the framing on, the, and on that end of the house that would indicate a lower um, clearance, a lower, lower, root, lower roof structure. Mm -hmm. um, but there's one essentially at the wall between the, the east front room and the museum room and the uh, entrance room and another out at the front corner that would indicate that there was more structure going in that direction at some time. Mm -hmm. The location of this building in regard to the first meeting house right across the street makes me wonder whether that extension could have been put on there as a noon house mm -hmm. in around 1780. But we don't know. And it disappeared long, long ago. There's no photographs or anything else that that so, give us any um, indication of what that the, extension was. What was what's the date of the original house, circa? We have never been able to determine that. It could be in the 1740s, and it could be around 1780. The the, the deeds just don't extend back from before about 1790. Okay. All right, and then the pink part that I've put here. What do we think the date is of that? Around it's 1790 and 92, something like that. That's and right probably around, right around probably, when my house in Newburyport was built. Probably museum entrance room was the same time. This it's a separate structure, but there's no, in the attic, there's no clapboard, no holes for any clapboards put on the end of the house, which mm -hmm. makes us wonder whether those whole three, that whole three business was done in such rapid succession that it never, it never got, to, it was almost a simultaneous action. Okay, and yeah. when was the back lean to? About eight, uh, okay, the kitchen bathroom area was 1850-ish, uh, uh, about 1850. And the extension on the left is 20th century. Initially, yeah. it was um, a, a woodshed, and then later it was made into a... a a room in the 20, in the 1950s, it was made into a room and extended forward a little bit there. So that's from somewhere between, uh, part of it was built before 30, 1938 and part of it was built in 1956. 56, you said? Yeah. You know, when, when Dan talks about a theme, 
it just so pops into my head. I, if I were to think of this house as having a personality, yeah. I would say that its personality was, I will adapt and I will adjust to take care of these people. There you go. <laughs> you know, yeah. and it, it, there may yeah. be a theme in there somewhere too. Yeah. Uh, the other thing no, I would the, say, Dan. Yeah, it, the, it, the Janet. I, oh, go ahead, Barry. What, one other thing that is a development in a, addition, the last addition was 1941 or thereabouts. They put a shed dormer on top of the museum entrance room. Okay, yeah, I, 1941. Yeah, Shed Dormer over. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so um, Janet, I had to, is from your comment a moment ago, I can't help but think about it because it's the buzzword of these days but um, to I will adapt, I will adjust resi resiliency. Ah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right? right. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, see, uh, already I think this is great. Uh, I know that I've just put together a very crude diagram, but to me, this is part of the, part of what we need to make sure everyone is aware of and how we understand how this was put together over time can help to guide how it's going to look as we're moving forward. Um, so I find this to be very helpful, very useful. I bet you that, that the majority of people in the town have no idea that what they think of as a whole is really a bunch of parts put together, right? Yeah. So uh, let's go upstairs for a second. And I'm just saving this. Uh, so Barry, you talked about a ballroom. Tell, tell me where that was. The west chamber, the small chamber and the upper hall were originally the ballroom. So this? Nope, bring it back to the fireplace. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. You said west chamber, so just a minute. Here. Yeah. And that center stairway originally came right up into that room. Okay. And it was a, pub it was a public room. Uh, it has a cove ceiling. I think you probably saw that when you were in the house. I just don't, I don't remember it, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, so I'm sure that's room. all right. But it, it, has a, it has a cove ceiling, which it makes it the only room in the house that's tall enough to put a grandfather clock in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I got the clock in the front hall, but I can't take it up there because until that room's done. <laughs> um, <laughs> and when what when do we believe this was used as a ballroom or a public room? Uh, prior to 1812, 1813. Okay. And so what we already know is that this here was anticipated potentially as part of the original house. That, yes. <clears throat> okay, right? Yeah. Ignore, ignore my bad typing. Not a problem. All right. And I said possibly not with conventional stair axis as well. Yeah. I mean, there could have been a, a tight stairway there, but uh, in, in front of the chimney, but I don't. Uh, Maybe. They changed the stairway mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, uh, apparently in 1830s, and they had a boxed in, I believe, a boxed in stairway that mm -hmm. went up. Uh, and the trouble with that was it was like a ladder. It was had 11 in, eleven inch, 12 inch uh, rises. And uh, at, in the 20th century, they ripped that out and built this thing that's there. In the winders. Have, yeah, yeah, in order to have stairs uh, that were reasonable in, in height. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's not it's a great... 
some of us have had the view that we should replace it and do something different with it. But uh, mm -hmm. at any rate, that's what's there. Yeah. Okay. And then the back attic and the back room were probably very low ceiling. And this one, because it got the dormer, became slightly more usable. That's correct. Okay. All right. That's correct. And the little and, and, bathroom was cut out of that. And of course, after the after the in period was over, the house was divided right down the middle with a property line mm -hmm. sold to two different parties in 1813. And so sometime after that, the small chamber had been put in and, and cut out of the big room in order to get another bedroom in that end of the stuff. So if I were to build a little timeline here on the side, and I won't spend too much longer on this, but I'm still interested in it. Um, we know that in, we'll just say the mid 1700s, there was potentially a two room house. Yeah. Right? Yep. Right. Then in 1790s, yep. it was expanded. We don't know when it was expanded over on the right-hand side because we don't have any history of that, right? No. The, this old extended foundation. I would, I would, I would, ex, I would make the assumption that yeah. that was early. Yeah. In its life, when it yeah. disappeared, I don't know, but it, I would make the assumption that that addition, the addition on the east, had had been uh, early in in the eighteen in the eighteenth century. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, but in the 1790s when it was expanded, how was yep. it being how was it being used at that point? It was ex it was expanded for use as an inn and otherwise public building. I mean not not, not government building, but um Okay. All right, and then in 1813 is when it was divided. In 1813, it was divided. And, and it, um, it was divided into two owners, right? Yep. And used residentially? Yes. Okay. And has it been on this property the entire time? Yes. As far as we know, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And... What happened after, when, when was the 1813? Yeah. I'm not sure what your question is. Sorry. Okay. It, it, I, uh... Okay, sorry, I was just fixing my typo. Um, from 1813, it was divided in half. How long did, was it in that iteration before it turned to something else? Before it turned back to a uh, uh, single owner? Sure, yep. Uh, it was in that status until 1940, 41. 1941. Okay. No, no. Reverted to single owner in 1941. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, in 1941. And was that owner private? Yeah. And it was used as a home? Yes. Uh, well, it continued to be two, double tenement uh, until uh, the 1960s, early 1960s. Continued to be double tenement, even okay. though it was a single owner. Got it until 1960s. Then, yeah, and then it became a single owner residence and continued in that form either by either owner occupied or with tenants until um, the town bought it in 1996. Okay, got it. The other piece that I should tell you to go with this is that the east side of the house where the east chamber is that i mean where the 
East front room downstairs is, that was a used as a barber shop in the early 20th century. It was used as a butcher shop in the early 20th century. Um, there was a lean-to, additional lean-to building on the outside on the right, which had the town fire truck in it in the 1920s. Um, uh, there were, and then, and the, the second floor room in the front on that end mm -hmm. was the American Legion's meeting place <laughs> after World War I in the 1920s. And we believe that's how it ended up with a hardwood floor because the, the carpenters in the Legion probably put it in. <laughs> Okay, and you're saying that this was in the early 20th century? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for indulging me to do this exercise, although you all know it. If I knew any of this, I had forgotten it, and now it's on paper. It's good to have the colors. We've never done yeah. it. And, and we can turn this into a better diagram, but I, I'm already conceptualizing that this is a vital piece of putting together a grant application. You know, it's, okay, it's I really have, I made a diagram something like this back in the 90s, uh, but I, it hasn't come through to us to, to really use since, but I certainly can work on getting one ready that would. Okay. Be a well, finished product. Listen, it, it took us minutes today. So let's talk um, just for a few minutes about the exterior of the building and what what your vision is, because it you know it now reads as a whole in that it's painted one color mm -hmm. with the exception of the dormer at the back. I um, in fact, since we're on screen, here we go. Mm -hmm. You all seeing that? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So clearly. Um, you know, it reads as a, you know, at least from this side, it's a pretty simple salt box structure with the added dormer on the back. Yeah. And as it, you know, it, you do note the fact that the height on either side of the front door is different, you know, of the water yep. board that's on the building. And mm -hmm. that speaks to also the fact that now I understand it's really two different buildings. Yeah. The way, the way that it was constructed. Is there actually a party wall down the middle? In the basement? No, there, there was. was. There, there was, was, but it was opened up some years ago. So okay. they could go from one to the other. Okay. So the, um, as we're looking, and, and I can't tell from this photograph here, right now, um, I seem to remember it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe I'm remembering something else that. Tim's report had talked about the fact that there, there's no original clapboards on this building. It's all That's newer. true. They're, they're all newer. Yeah. And the window casings or trims or sills that are there is probably not a one that's original. Is that correct? I wouldn't say that about sills for sure. The, there's not much that could be original at this point because we took out and changed the front one recently. Okay. Um, do we, what do we have for a photographic documentation of this book? Not much in the 19th century. We've got quite a lot of, we've got some pictures in the 20th century, but we don't have much of anything from the 19th century other than a photo that was taken around 1890. Okay. And what is that? Does that photo show anything remarkable? Well, at that time, the, windows in the front of the right-hand end of the house, um, uh, the front side of the house there, were still the long windows from the 1830s that went mm -hmm. down to the floor. Mm -hmm. So that they produced an obvious difference in fenestration from the rest of the place. Sure. And uh, um, in fact, we've got, we do have some photos from in the 20th century that give a little bit more idea of how some of that stuff changed over time. Right. But in the 1950s, the owner that fixed the place up at that point and took it from being a really junky tenement house to what looked like a better residence, 
uh, they changed almost all the windows and put in uh, uh, six over six windows through the house, and in a few cases, even eight over eight. Okay. Uh, so there's only about four antique windows in the house okay. as it sits today. And <clears throat> when we say antique, not 1700s. No. Most, most, most likely. No. Oh. Late eighteen hundreds or early nineteen hundreds. Well, there could be something that's earlier, earlier nineteen hundreds. Okay. Um, the 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 two windows upstairs on the, to the right of the front door are old windows, mm -hmm. and the one that shows in this picture with the yellow sash is an old window, mm -hmm. but nothing special. Okay. So, each of you, what's your vision for? You spoke a little bit about uh, preserving or restoring certain individual spaces within Bullard House to a particular time frame, and I get that. From the exterior, is there any desire, or tell me what your thoughts are in terms of what level of preservation is occurring in your mind's eye? Good question. Yeah, I think we've been so focused on what's wrong underneath and and uh, <laughs> that we haven't thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it almost seems, I mean, the idea that we have sort of this classic lean-to or salt box look, it, it's almost like a little bit of a hoax, you know, to make it look like it's one, one united thing. And maybe that's okay. Maybe the exterior can present itself as a sort of traditional salt box house. Mm -hmm. And and then the surprise when you go inside, guess how this was became what it is today? I don't know. Right. No. No. But that that's a perfectly valid approach, Janet. And and uh, and that's what I'm trying to get at because it informs how you design something, right? And how we look at oh, sure. how we talk about it. Because the, I think about, I'm sure all of you have been to Strawberry Bank in Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. Well, Strawberry Bank is in fact a living neighborhood, right? I mean, that, that entire mm -hmm. museum is a compilation of things that happened over a fairly significant span of time in Portsmouth, including, you know, water being filled in, turned into land. Um, <laughs> but as you're walking through, they've taken various time frames and preserve buildings to that particular time frame. And they altered them to make that happen, but there's a level of authenticity, at least in the approach of how they renovated each of the buildings. And then you go in and, you know, they have had, they have tried to make the interior match, you know, the exterior for that particular time frame and stylistic approach. And perhaps for Bullard House, to your point, Janet, the exterior is, rendered as the salt box of a particular time frame and we've tried to put you know simple but appropriate details in for that time frame and then when you come inside it can tell a different story it's packaged this way the only disconnect i have is that if there was a room that had tall greek revival windows originally and that's not being rendered from the exterior, it's a little bit of a disconnect when you come into that interior space. So then you either need to show that with a photograph or you in fact frame a fake interior wall with a very tall window, you know, with a mural behind it like you're looking outside because that's what the room would have had or whatever the case may be. You see where I'm getting at? Yes. Is what is our vision? And we need to be mindful that we don't have 10,000 square feet to play with here, right? We, we need All right. To... All right. The, 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 in the, in the, when I was a child in the mid 20th century, the, the long windows in the front room were still there. Yeah. And the, I mean, the, the uniform windows got put in in 1956. Right. And so I have no problem at all if we decide we want to do some windows to suit an interior theme. 
and having it not quite match on the outside. I don't yeah, know. But, but the outside matches something. because we paint it the same color and we. Yeah, exactly. We, we do siding and trim that's, yeah, that's yeah. consistent. Right. We already put new clapboards on, on the end that we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. uh, and the great thing about them is that the paint doesn't wear off them and peel off them near so fast as it does on the old ones. <laughs> so we really want to replace all the clapboards at various times as we work on the house so that we get to the point where it's easy to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and we also need to deal with insulating the place. Sure. So um, those are those are things that I thought we would address together when the time mm -hmm. comes. Sure. Um, and and as far as the windows are concerned, others can have other opinions, but my opinion is most of what's there, if it's serviceable, you leave it, you fix it mm -hmm. and serve and use it because that's what's gotten there over time. And as you say, the outside appearance is okay. It's a it's a typical salt box house of the late eight, of the 18th century, um, mm -hmm. and I that's no big problem if that's the case. Uh, it 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 certainly sets it off from the rest of the center of town, which is very much a 19th century village. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so I, I think it, you know, I, I was putting you all somewhat on the spot to ask you what your vision is. And, and Janet, I thank you because you're the first one that spoke up and, you know, threw out, <laughs> a, threw out an approach. And, and this will take some time to get there. But I guess where I'm at, and, and I'm going to run out of time shortly because I'm going to have to jump onto something at 2.30. But let me throw out what my vision is for how I might be able to help. And you all can either respond by saying that makes sense or take it and talk amongst yourselves and, and you know, get back to me. But what I'd like to be able to do is based on what we had discussed today, and, and there may be a couple little gaps in it, I think I would throw together, um, and I'm gonna use the term master plan, I'd throw together a little bit of a master plan for how we might approach where we're at today to get to something that opens to the public in Berlin and has along the way, you know, seeking some funding, a construction effort, a, you know, design effort, a construction effort, uh, you know, all sorts of pieces, but at least try to get onto paper what that looks like and what steps need to be resolved along the way. Um, and, come back as a group and walk through that. I would anticipate that collectively, you know, I, I'd take a stab at putting it together, but I'd anticipate collectively, we may modify it or adjust it. And I'm not saying that once we get started on that path, whatever that path looks like, we don't make adjustments along the way as we need to, but at least it's, it, it gives a linear sequential process um, to, and, and some order to what we need to accomplish. And, and then take it from there, um, because I do think that there needs to be some consulting. I think there needs to be some careful, as you pointed out, Janet, some careful consideration about, you know, when is money spent and for what, and making sure that it's in keeping with whatever parameters were given to that money in the first place. And uh, just work towards the end goal in mind, but strategically. So that's that's where I'm at. Is that making sense to people? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like the word strategically. Yeah, strategic yeah, is yeah. Yeah. sequential yeah. to just yeah. the yeah. sequence of what needs to happen would <clears throat> be so helpful. Yeah, because I think otherwise, at least as I perceive it, otherwise I think you run the risk that you pour money into something that was it that might be a worthwhile effort in and of itself, but in the big picture, might have been done a little bit differently. Um, and I, I think you also run the risk of you do something because that's what you have the money for, but then it peters out before the next thing needs to happen without a plan of how to get there. And I also think you know, with, using the term, you know, keep the eye on the prize. If we know where you're headed, it's much easier to be strategic along the way, right? 
And I think you all know it, it, you know, in your own mind's eye, what you want it to be. Well, let's, let's make sure that we can actually articulate that vision, you know, in written form, because we're going to be asking for money and in visual form, because the pictures speak louder than words often, right? And that to me would be built into this at this point. Um, as well as, as I said, bringing some other people on board as, as we need. Um, Dan, can I ask one question that sure. will help me tremendously? We are nowhere near ready to apply for a grant, I don't think. We, don't we have to get through these things before we can convince? I, I, I believe so, Janet. And that's why I said, I think that when you're going for a grant, you should have it fully baked yeah, and clear as to what it is we're looking for yeah. and why. And the only thing we will have to be sure we do is somehow convince the people of the town that we're not just sitting on their money. Correct. We're making, we're doing a lot of work right now. Yeah. And um, I will have to think about how we can communicate that to people. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up because I believe that built into this plan is also going to be a public outreach process. Mm. Um, I, I think there needs to be some communication. There needs to be some visuals. There needs to be some input, right? I yeah. mean, the, if money is coming from the town, let some people from the town give their opinions and comment on things and ideas and thoughts, right? Mm. Everything can be considered at this point because we are early in the process. Um, I, I do think, however, that what we talked about you know, earlier in our conversation, having articulated what the society's clear vision is for this is strategic in terms of an outreach process. Because I don't think that you want to have, open it up to a public outreach that doesn't have that focus. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you run the risk of, you know, hey, we need more affordable housing in the town. Let's turn it into affordable housing instead. Right, and I, 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 that's maybe a drastic, you know, juxtaposition, but that could happen, right? So that's why I think um, that having articulated the clear vision, an understanding of the history of, you know, how we got to where we're at today, um, and then you know, showing that we're road mapping how this is looking moving forward, I think one of the best things you can do coming out of that town meeting is in fairly short order, show that the society's got its act together. We know what we're doing. We know what our needs are gonna be. We know how long it's gonna take. You know, we're flexible and resilient enough that we can you know, modify things as we go along the way, but we're gonna make it happen. Is that resonating with anyone? Yeah. Yes, it okay. is highly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this is part of our, our situation that we've been, we were talking about even just before you got here today is that, is how do we best use the money we've now been Absolutely. blessed with yeah. uh, to, to get some of these, some of the building's problems behind us yeah. and move us on to, uh, to uh, a situation where we can have things done and, and, and where we'll know what we still got to do and got to fund. Right, and, um, I, and I would like to lay it out in such a way um, that also serves another purpose other than the couple we've talked about. And it, looking from the perspective of, we're all here talking today as stewards for this property and for, stu you know, it's stewardship for making something happen here. But the, the process or the, I hate to use the word burden, the responsibility of making that happen can't fall on just a few pairs of shoulders. It's not realistic. And none of us are getting any younger. So if you're clear enough about what you're doing and targeted enough, then I also think that what you're doing is building a broader base to make something happen. It's maybe getting more people involved in the historical society. It's start talking to people that wanna be doing something from a, you know, exhibit perspective or programming in this building when they see it happening. And it's making it so that we're, we're actually building our base of making it, you know, not fall onto the few shoulders, because we all know that that's a much harder thing to do, right? As soon as you're clear on what you're trying to do, 
it's much easier to build, you know, to get, get more involved in the process. And instead of asking somebody to, you know, hey, help us get from here to there, you can start asking for targeted help. You know, we need six volunteers to come and catalog items and bring them to this storage area. You know, we need to do it by this date. You know, we need two people to join the board so that we can, you know, get more, you know, uh, you know, headspace into planning, whatever the case is. I'm, I'm making up things as I go along, but, but I think it's important that um, I think the, the three of you, and I know you've lost a number or two um, in recent years, um, have already accomplished something big, and that's to have a sum of money set aside and to have already done some thinking on this. Now let's, you know, take it and broaden it. So that was my talk good. to everyone today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of the good things we've got is we've got the town hall next door. Yeah. And we have in the past and we can do again more yeah. once we get out of this blasted pandemic yeah. with, uh, uh, you know, exhibits and programs and yeah. stuff that would that would relate to what we do here in terms yeah. of building program ahead of time. Yeah. And I but would it, also say in this picture you have up now, you can see the, the curatorial building. That yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and Barry, I'm going to also throw this out. Um, your knowledge and history with the town and with this building are are a gift to the town. Um, we can't lose it. We've got to start getting this information written down. And you know the the diagram that I just did very simply. That's incredible amount of knowledge and. You know, for this to really take off and move forward and not have it fall onto again the few pairs of shoulders, um, I want to make sure that we, you know, we really take advantage of. You've got so much in your head um, and so much background and experience here that's going to highly benefit grant asks and the vision for this moving forward. Um, so I, I just thank you for sharing what you did so far, and, but I know there's even more that I that we need to extract you know, from, from your history here. Amen. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So um, with that, I'm going to suggest that um, I will do my best, you know, with everything I've got to take a stab at throwing together my first vision of just, you know, a, a list of a master plan. And maybe we get together in, I don't know, two to three weeks. Sounds good. Is that good? And why don't we email? I don't want to throw out a date right now. I've got multiple uh, deadlines and things going on at the moment, but you know, let, I'm going to say we're going to get together in early June. Early June. Okay. Yeah. And and why don't we, um, you know, with some emails back and forth, June, we'll figure out when that'll be, and we'll figure it out well in advance for, so you can all post a meeting, and potentially if it works out, um, you know, maybe we'll even meet in person. Mm, that'd be neat. Um, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah I, I am in Maine most of the time. I can also tell you that I have an elderly um, father who's not doing well at the moment. Mm. So I, I also have that factoring in and it's adding a lot of instability to my schedule these days. Um, so that's hard. We've all had that experience. Yes. And, and <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And this will be the fourth one for me and my wife. Mm. Oh, dear. So we've we've been through it as well. I, I want to ask you one question, and that sure. is that you know we've done some work in the house. We've replaced some under some framing, I mean floor framing. Yeah. Much of it was 20th century floor framing that sure. we replaced. And we put down plywood subfloors. Mm -hmm. Do those have to be torn out if we get a preservation project grant because it doesn't suit the preservation restriction issues? It, so Barry, my answer to that is, well, that depends upon what our vision is for the house, mm. right? If it's just simply to stabilize and make it useful, then maybe plywood's okay. Okay. But, but if it's to, if the area where you put the plywood in happens to be one of those front rooms that we want to renovate to a particular time frame, then maybe the plywood's not appropriate. But I, I think that 
so that's my my high level answer to your question. Then there's going to be the okay. more pragmatic. The more pragmatic one is going to be oh sure in anything that needs to be repaired because otherwise we could have a more catastrophic, you know, occurrence or something go wrong or something further deteriorate. We should do as effectively and as inexpensively as possible, knowing that we can come back and change it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 if you can put plastic over it and keep it for in a, three months, then given the process that we're about to embark on, that's probably okay too, right? I mean, you, back to Janet's you know comment earlier, let's spend the money wisely. Yeah. So we should be working on uh, on the <clears throat> on the vision on our mission. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say I can work on my vision of what the master plan is, and, and I'm using master plan because I haven't come up with a better better uh, title yet. Um, I think if you all work on that very tight okay. document that talks about the significance of this building, you know, not too lengthy. You don't want anyone to have to read a, a, a PhD dissertation on it. <laughs> and that tight paragraph about what the vision is for what it's going to become, I think that would be a brilliant thing to start with. Um, and then, you know, each of you in your own time, think about, uh, you know, the question I posed for, you know, what is the vision in your mind's eye for what this building looks and feels like? Aside from maybe, you know, some individual <laughs> spaces inside that, you know, are, are brought to a specific time frame. So, uh, so uh, with, with that, I'm going to sign off to uh, be ready for my 2.30. I hope this was helpful. This was yes. very helpful. <laughs> And yes. it's wonderful to see you all. Yes, thank and you so much. Nice wish you a great you. warm weekend in June. Uh, how far, how many days into it are you? Well, I tested positive yesterday. Okay. Um, didn't feel well, that well, uh, maybe the day before. So I've still got a few days. Yeah. Okay. You right. needed a rest, June. Yeah. <laughs> Mother Nature is taking care of giving you a rest. And, <laughs> and right. the, the weather is such that you can probably go outside and just get some sun on your skin for a few minutes and soak it all in and become there more helpful. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Beautiful weather. Good Thanks. to see everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Dan. You're very welcome. Take Thank care. Thank you very much. You bye bet. Bye-bye. Yeah. I think we should continue for a few minutes and just kind of. Work on. I mean, I'll, I'll start. I mean, an awful lot of what we just spent a lot of time on is already in the preservation plan, but it, I've just got to get it in a more concise document. I mean, that plan was intended to be, you know, an encompassing thing, and I need to get it in a tight document so that it suits the different uses that it needs to be made up for. And we'll work on that stuff together. And uh, I think we'll we'll share some things around between ourselves and in the next uh, couple of weeks and see what we can do with all of that. I think that's, I and mean, it's know, very doable. It yeah, already and, exists. The history is already all over the, you know, the National Register document and everything else. It just, I mean, it's like June, what you just did with creating a document off of that for some other purposes and it may well be that what you just did is going to help us with uh with this task too yeah and, you know barry i think that's that's where your strength is in you know, i mean you have a lot of strengths but that's where in this particular um task we have to do is that you can really bring in the history and i think for me personally i have a history background but not necessarily in the, this history here in this yeah. community as well yeah yeah and I think for me, it's asking those big, um, I don't want to say philosophical questions, but, um, you know, wh what do we want to have for the people? What do we want them to be able to do? You know, so I kind of uh, think that I will be able to, you know, um, make more suggestions along those lines. And... Uh, and June, you have such a wonderful attention to detail. You know, I'm always amazed at how you can <laughs> you can just uh, yeah. and and figuring out what to do with that detail to reach people. And so, you know, I 
I think the three of us are a good team to work on this. And I think we'll all come at it from a slightly different way. It was really interesting when he asked the question that we kind of answered with silence for a few minutes about what do you want the impression of the house to be? Yeah. Uh, the outside. And then Janet, when you spoke of it, what you said was essentially what's been in the preservation plan for years. Yes, that's probably where um, I thought it, it up. <laughs> uh, uh, but it, you know, at the same time, you expressed it in your own words and so on. But it, 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 yeah. I, I didn't want to, I didn't need to say more about it because you said what needed to be said well, about it. Good. And good. and uh, I, I thought that it was, uh, uh, you know, I mean, there was nothing in this that indicated we didn't know what we were doing. Well, of course not. <laughs> there was a lot in this that indicated that, okay, he wants it. He's looking for it in a more concise way or this particular thing and that particular thing differently. I've actually got a plan of the house. June, you've seen it. It's in the front room there on an old piece of paper where I had the color, different parts of the house colored different colors and so forth um, uh, that I made you know, in 1996 or 1997. And, um, but I haven't really, I, don't yeah. I, huh? I don't remember. I don't, you know, I haven't been here that long, so. Oh no, but that was, that's still there in the house. Well, where is it? I mean, we it should was laying, it was laying on top of one of the cases or something in the, in the parlor in recent times. Did we rescue it and bring it into the curatorial building? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I think it's still there, but uh, it was a it was something I drew on old white table paper, you know, I mean, uh, but it was uh, and but it's the very same kind of thing that he just created. And we can we can make a new one. That's fine. Okay. Um, work very well. With can, it. can I make a suggestion maybe that we go off and each from our own way, our brains work and our own way of thinking, um, sure. come up with some responses to some of the things he's raised and then maybe get together have us get together once before we meet with him again or do we want to wait till we meet with him and let him guide us through the next discussion as well no i think we should start developing these things ourselves as you suggested and that we should talk to each other you know develop some stuff or whatever else and then get and get together and talk all right and maybe and then know, talk so have a meeting maybe in another week or so yeah it, or when it, halfway between now and June, you know, when- Let's see, yeah. Um, yeah. Today, today is the 13th. Uh, so our next meeting isn't, yeah, a regular meeting. <clears throat> I should think maybe we give ourselves a, a, a little kick to say, let's do this and let's not put it off and maybe just say within another week, we'll we'll talk about what we've thought of, unless it's a really busy week for people and they need to have a little more time than that. Well, I think that it would, I think you've got about the right idea. Uh, within a week or two, we should, yeah. we should talk some more about it. And we should also be, we should on our own be working on stuff. And if we want to, yeah. we can share things we're working on with each other a little bit. Yeah. Email or something, but um, we don't want to develop it all that way because they were outside a meeting, but at the same time, yeah, we, right. uh, we have to be careful we, about open We can be reacting to it and thinking about it uh, and hearing each other's views a little bit so that we <clears throat> are moving toward a- uh, Well, it's kind of uh, nice sometimes to go off by yourself too, because I do think each yeah. of the three of us thinks, I don't mean thinks different things necessarily, but we think differently the way our and, yeah. and the things that are important to us and what we focus on, I think that's a strength of this group right now. So right. maybe to not talk about it a lot with each other until we've had at least a week, if not longer, to okay. do it on our own and yeah. then be able to come yeah. back and spend some time working together on it. Is the tight mission statement something I could work on and share around? And Yes. Well, yeah. I think... I think we have, I the think two, we have to be careful. The two careful sentence again, thing, the two sentence the, thing. How does that work in terms of the open meeting law? Can we be doing that? Or do we oh, really we, want to have we, an open meeting where we can discuss it? Well, I think that, <clears throat> I think we could all work on it, but. Yeah. But, but, it's uh, a draft we're passing around. We have to have an open meeting 
to approve it. And, yeah. and yeah. but uh, I, I mean, I, I think we need to, uh, I, I don't know, it just so if it, we have, it's yeah, there if for we food have, to thought. <laughs> if we have to have a meeting for everything we, I know. It's, 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 it's so beautiful to the open meeting law that we've been having a lot of a lot of meetings. But I mean, yes, that doesn't bother me really because I like other people to be involved. I mean, we don't have anybody listening a lot of the time, but um, in the event that they want to, I think it makes it the whole process mm -hmm. stronger. Well, we All could right. meet. We could meet. We could work on our own. Um, uh, on the mission statement, or just think, or in Barry, if you want to actually write something out, that would, you know, we could we could deal with that on like the twenty fifth. That would be uh, a week and a half. Yeah, that's yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, June? You're going to be better by then. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I. I need a, uh, to set aside some time when I feel better to go to Ossipi. Uh We do have a, an agreement that the court has ordered to sell the place. What, what, it could still fall through, but um, I need to deal with that a little bit. Uh, but the 25th, I think, would be a good okay. a good All day. Right. Yeah. The 25th. And then if it's not, if that's a good Ossipi day, I think Barry and I have more flexibility probably than you yeah. do. Yeah, well, that's Wednesday. And so uh, I like to be, I like to be here on Wednesdays. Um, while you're closeted a bit right now is a good time for you to think about some of these things though. Yeah. And maybe work on it and, and pull out the document that you produced recently um, and think about that and, and how much uh, will that help to satisfy some of the things he's looking for. Okay. D uh, did I send it to you, Janet? Well, which one is that, June? Well, what I who did lived, was... The people who lived in the house? No. Yes. Yes, where, I do have that one. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Who, who and where and yeah, yeah. The, how the... the uh, how it... <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I think you did. I, I know that I know it. I, I, I haven't read it, but I know that it came in and I well, knew what I, it was yeah. about. So I haven't. That's interesting. It, I, I, well, I printed you a copy, Barry, because you didn't yeah. have a printer, I think. Yeah. But, but um, I think you have it, Janet. It would have been yes, sent. I do. I do have it. Yeah. 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 I've been looking okay. at it. It's, yeah. it's, it's interesting. Very interesting. It was a good exercise for me because I understood a lot of what, <clears throat> a lot of, uh, a lot better, you know, what we talked about today and what, what he diagrammed for us. So, yes. Yeah. June, you need to go now and get, get a nice drink <laughs> of something and lie down and have a rest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's in the open meeting. And so, <laughs> can we all do, do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we all do that? Right? Everybody should Barry, be. you yeah. are going to go now and start recording all these things you know that people are pleading with you to get get recorded. <laughs> well, a lot of it is recorded. It it already Good. exists in 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 various in a couple of different forms, um, and and some significant part of this is sprinkled throughout the preservation plan. Which is but good news, you know? People, people, people read it and they get so thinking about all the other things that are in it that they don't stop to realize that, you know, what we might actually exhibit in this room is actually shown in that thing, for instance. Yeah. And, um, and so a lot of that relates very much to the, uh, the concept of mission and, and vision, the vision for the house. So um, I, I, I can pull well, a lot of that out and redo it. Knowing that the actual history of the house, which is in that pres preservation document, um, certainly informs how we would like to show the house. And I think yeah. that's, that's the newer part that th the document is what informs it. But then our choices that we're gonna make now 
-hmm. are what shows how we're going to use that historical information. How we're and going that's, to get that's there. the part that interests me a lot. And that's, mm. that's a little different from just, you know, at thinking about what we're going to show. Yeah. It's how we're going to choose to present it, which is pretty interesting. I think one of the things that we want to, I, I, at least I, I've had the view that um, a lot of historical societies try to do a lot of the same stuff you do at, say, at Sturbridge Village or Plymouth Plantation or whatever. And I don't see, I, I won't say that that's all bad or anything, but I, I'm not convinced that that's our chief mission because if people really want to learn something about cooking on a fireplace, they can go to those places. Um, if they want to, you know, really want to do this or that. Whereas I think our effort is to do the things that are uniquely Berlin. Well, and, and uniquely have to do with the people, yeah. yeah, with the house itself, but yeah. but with the town as a whole yeah. and the people in the town. Those are the things that we is our main mission. And therefore, I've I've never thought that you know a full blown restoration of the house to one particular period had any really real validity for for our main mission, which is the whole town's history. Okay. Well, I'm going to move because I'm getting hungry. I'm going yeah. to move okay. that we adjourn, adjourn. Okay. adjourn the meeting. Okay. Bless all you right. all. Uh, yes. Aunt, are you going to adjourn, dear? Uh, I move oh. to adjourn. Okay, second. Uh, all those in favor. <laughs> and Janet. And <laughs> yeah. Take care. Okay, thanks. Well.